We wanted to have a lot of different beers. The demographic in Torrington goes from 21 to 91 and everything in between, and everybody wants something different. So by having a small batch system, we're able to accommodate that, but we've got lots of fermenters. So the, the vessels that actually do convert the, the grain water basically into uh, alcohol, we've got lots of those. So we can do the same kind of throughput as a larger system, but we can do smaller batches so that we can kind of come up with all these different flavors and different things for people to try. Just a quick reminder for you to like, subscribe, and rate this podcast so we can get your feedback and know how to make it better. Hey, it's Ari. Welcome to another episode of the Made in America podcast. Today, I'm here with Matt Tack, founder of Bad Dog Brewing Company. Matt, thank you so much for coming on today. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Well, listen, it's my pleasure, Matt, and it's the Made in America podcast. So we're going to start off with the same two questions. Sure. What do you make and why do you make it? So we make beer. Um, we're a small batch br uh, brewing company out in Torrington, and we make it because, honestly, we enjoyed beer, and we wanted to, uh, you know, join the brewery uh, market and, and really serve people, you know, and, and have people have a good time. That's really what, what it's all about. Beer and a good time. That does sound like, uh, that sounds like <laughs> a good combination to me, Matt. Absolutely. So let's kind of start off with why you started the brewery. I mean, I think you're actually one of the youngest companies that we've had on the podcast, I've, the company's barely over a year old, right? That's right. We opened. We actually opened for business the end of January of 2021. Um, we started it because it, it's it's kind of a long story. My kids thought I needed a hobby, <laughs> and so they got me the brew a, brew your own beer at home kit. You know, the one gallon thing. Yeah. And then my OCD kicked in. We kept escalating it and and upping the ante until we got a pilot system. And my son's like, "Let's just." let's go look for a brewery. Let's go do this. And so we started walking around and talking to different towns about what they wanted, what was available. And we ended up in Torrington in, in the old firehouse. So it's a his, on the National Historic Registry. It's a great old building and it's we're just having a good time with it. So wait, you got, so, first of all, I love how like a Father's Day or a Christmas gift turns yeah. into a whole business. Great story. <laughs> so you, you started with the, the one gallon brew system and you got a, a pilot system? Yeah, we, we, we went from one gallon to five gallons. And then the pilot systems are typically smaller systems that you can do experimentation on. And so we bought one from Colorado Brewing Systems out in Colorado. And uh, we were just still just brewing our, our beer and, and putting it. Uh, in the little kegs that we had at home and sharing them with people. And then it, it just kind of kept escalating to the point of, you know, we had kegs everywhere. And then, <laughs> and then it was, let's just do something with this. You know, we're, we're starting to get that we understand stuff and, and really move forward with it. And so what, what, what's, what kind of beer do you guys brew? Like kind of what's the angle on what you guys are trying to do to stand out in the market? So our, our thing is small batch, right? We want to provide our customers the freshest beer possible. Um, so where a lot of other breweries have larger systems, which is great, and we are moving in that direction too, just really driven by the market, um, we want to have a lot of different beers. The demographic in Torrington goes from 21 to 91, and everything in between, and everybody wants something different. So by having a small batch system, we're able to accommodate that, but we've got lots of fermenters, so the, the vessels that actually do convert the, the grain water basically into... Uh, alcohol. We've got lots of those, so we can do the same kind of throughput as a larger system, but we can do smaller batches so that we can kind of come up with all these different flavors and different things for people to try. So does that mean when I, if I come to Bad Dog uh, Brewery, I got like lots and lots of options to try from? Is that the... We typically have 11 to 14 different beers to try. No kidding. Yeah. So we, we try to, uh, again, cater to the people. You know, it was... What, a great example is we have a beer now, and I hate the name, but it's called Looking for a Light. And it's because everybody came in, we're just coming in and saying, hey, I drink Bud Light. Uh -huh. um, what do you got that's comparable to it? And, and of course we don't, right? But we do have a beer that's not super hoppy. So this is, it's a blonde ale, but it was looking for a light. And it's been a huge seller this year. It, it's been unbelievable how many people are just having that kind of beer. It's a lighter beer. It's perfect for this time of year. It's not super heavy. 
and and that's the kind of that's a great example of it. We were don't like the name looking for a light. I don't. I, don't. I love the name. <laughs> I think it's I think it's I mean uh, you know it's it's so it's first of all it makes you go huh I wonder why they called it that and then it's got a great sort of backstory and like right. super descriptive and apparently a lot of people were looking for a light. The, my problem with it is it's not a light beer though. You know it, oh, it's still God. it's you know it's like five point two percent ABV alcohol by volume and so it's kind of the in the middle of the pack with with beers so it's not really a light beer but it's light in terms of its hoppiness and and you know some of the ipas kind of punch you yeah. initially and so this doesn't do that and that thing that's positive though right because i got to imagine well i'll speak from my own experience you know i can enjoy a really good hoppy ipa but then if i'm trying to go with like you know some friends or my wife who maybe doesn't want that if i go to a place that that's the only option then we're kind of stuck. Exactly. And and so we, you know, it's funny you mentioned that. My wife hates beer. She's getting better at it. Yeah. She initially hated beer. So she's been a really good sport about this whole thing. And, you know, when we were brewing at home on the stove and stuff, <laughs> she was she was okay with it. But we have other options. You know, we, we have uh, wine from local vineyards, um, you know, kind of keeping that local connection. And, and they're great wines available for people. And even hard ciders from from uh, local places, again, to just kind of keep the local connection and provide people options. Even we have a craft soda from, from New Britain, Avery Soda from New Britain. And again, it's to keep that, that local connection and, and give people just options so that they can have a good time. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, and, uh, and we got a lot to talk about. And I want to talk about sort of your background, which is definitely not in, in hospitality or beverage or brewing or anything. <laughs> um, it has, has its own connection to manufacturing. So so we'll get to that. Um, but I do want you to talk a little bit about the the firehouse and, and also your kind of connection with Torrington, because I think, you know, people that are in business, you know, always often a overlook old buildings and maybe don't understand how they can be reused. I think you guys had a creative example there and you worked with the town to sort of figure out the right location. And I think they helped you find it. So maybe share with the audience sort of the story of how you engage with Torrington and how they helped you find a spot. A a absolutely. Um, Torrington's been a great town to us. I have nothing but good things to say. We, we started looking around and we were looking at another old building. One of the problems honestly is, um, We've been to opening a brewery is really great. You get to go check out all kinds of breweries and see what you like and what you don't like. And, and there's great breweries everywhere. And industrial park, the ones that are industrial parks on relatively new buildings are great without question. But there's not a lot of character to the building, right? So you, so people come in, they have their beer, that that kind of stuff. Where we wanted to have something that told a story. So we did find an older factory. I wasn't convinced about it, but. But it was good enough that we could start really planning forward. And so we called the city, uh, the economics director, and said that we want to talk to you guys about what they would like, you know, make sure that everybody's on the same page and we're all working together. And within 24 hours, they had a meeting with all their department heads, the police chief, the fire chief, the fire marshal, the planning and zoning. Everybody was there, building department. And the mayor actually suggested that we look at the old firehouse after we told her what we wanted to do. And so we went there, pried open a piece of plywood that was in front of where the doors are now, right? It was, it was all covered up. The windows were smashed. And uh, we pried open the plywood. And my wife and I are standing there. And she's just looking around at the ground level. I'm looking up. I can see sky and birds are flying around, right? It's, you can see through the second floor. I'm thinking, oh. And my wife goes, this is it. And I, and I told her, for what? Bulldozer practice? What are we going to do with this? And she said, no, look beyond, look beyond what you see right now. You know, there was junk everywhere. She said, this is, this building's got a story to tell and we should tell it. And she was right. You know, it was an amazing building. We had amazing craftsmen really work on this building that, that cared about it and really went that extra mile to kind of restore it. Some things had to change, but we tried to keep some things that we could. And certainly things like, like all the wood that we had to take out. The whole second floor had to get replaced. We put new wood in. But we kept that second floor wood and we made things out of it, coasters, tables, um, flight holders, everything. And, and we started learning about the history of the building and, and really embracing that. And then, the, one of the, to me, one of the most amazing things happened. Then the city and, and the community really embraced us back and started bringing stuff in. We have um, like the last fire, the firebox from 1950 that was at the corner of Water Street, the street that we're on, and Prospect. So it's like one light down from us. Somebody brought it in. They had it. 
they just thought it should go back to where it belongs. People have been bringing in fire uniforms, helmets. Um, the police chief called me up and asked me if the fire truck wanted a friend. They had a, a, a 1991 police Harley they were paying storage on, but nobody could see it. And he was wondering if, if, if the city would loan it to me if we'd put it on display. And so we have a police bike next to our <laughs> fire truck. You know, and, and it's just been such an incredible outpouring of, of people's support. And so we're just really, I, I tell everybody I'm the luckiest person in the world because I get to play in that building every day. You know, man, it's amazing. That is, that is amazing. What a great, what a great story. And I know, um, you know, I, I listen and don't watch. So for people that aren't watching, you can't see on the table, but Matt was kind enough to bring some examples of these coasters and they're made of the wood from that second floor. Um, and I was at etched in, or I don't know how you guys got laser burned, laser burned in yeah. to the wood. But uh, you told me before, it's like you're holding a 105 year old coaster. Yep. Um, so that's pretty. Uh, that's that's pretty cool. Talk about a story to tell. What made you think to sort of call the city to tell them what you were doing and sort of ask for help? Was it just was it out of necessity? Was it just out of hey maybe they'll be helpful? Because it just seems like man, you made a phone call and boom, like they sprang to action. Yeah. Again, luck certainly had a play in it, but with um, with my engineering background, I, I kind of learned early on that it's okay to say you don't know things. And and honestly, we, we knew how to make beer. We knew what we wanted in a brewery. I don't know anything about planning and zoning. I don't know anything about fire re, fire safety requirements. So you have to ask. And, and, I, and I've found, and I've even found throughout my career that people are generally helpful. If you ask, people will will go that mile and help you understand things and they really have with us you know the the planning and zoning people sat down with us explained what we had to do stepped us through the whole process built the building department everybody was was unbelievable the fire marshal was there the fire department really has been an incredible resource they 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 love that we saved their building <laughs> right you know and and they always want to check it out but they've been you know working with us and explaining what stuff had to be done because when you look at a, a building we're actually zone. We're actually considered an assembly building, much like a church or a, a, a music, a giant music venue, or something along those lines. So, all the fire safety stuff had to be done, and, and I don't know anything about that. <laughs> you know, a smoke detector, right? right? I just need to put a smoke detector. Exactly. Somewhere. Apparently, maybe we a, need may, a lot may, more may, than may, that. Maybe like a maybe like a fire extinguisher under the sink, right? Exactly. Yeah. We needed right. a lot more than that, and uh, and so they explained stuff to me, and, and was and explained what we had to do, and really stepped us through the process. So it was really a, a great opportunity, and, and we learned a lot, you know, and so it worked out really well. And again, people were just willing to help. The first time is the first time you started a business. I, I did run. I left um, back in the day when I was working for Hamilton Sunstrand. I started an engineering firm. I thought I could do that by myself. And I did for about four years. And I turned out I didn't like it. And I didn't like it because I didn't like the financial side of it. You know, I, I didn't mind doing different engineering subjects and, and moving around. But I didn't really like the financial aspect of it. And so... I went back to back into the corporate world and, and was doing engineering, but um, this was different. This was almost, uh, uh, I want to say a labor of love, but it wasn't really love. It was more of a labor of respect. You know, the, this is a, it was an old firehouse, you know, and we needed to, per, to do justice to that and what it stood for and what it still stands for with, with all the artifacts in there. We've got equipment, you know, from, I've got stretchers from 1940 that we found, sirens from the the turn of the 19th century, you know, just old hose reels that are wooden from the late 1800s. And, and to be able to show people that stuff and, and show people, let people start seeing it and talking about, they haven't seen for years. You know, we have a fire truck, a 1939 Seagrave, and it is, um, and it was there, but nobody had seen it since the late 70s. So the fact that we could bring it out and, and let people see it and understand what this truck was, no seatbelts in it, you know, the gas <laughs> tank's right behind the driver's seat, and it would take nine firefighters to a fire. It, it, and it would do, in 1939, on unimproved roads, the, the company said it, it would do about 50 miles an hour. No I'm kidding. like, I don't even do that on my dirt bike. <laughs> I, my son and I had dirt bikes, and we were wearing helmets, you know? <laughs> it, and so just kind of putting all that stuff in perspective is, is really been a, a privilege for us, you know? And, 
And so we don't want to take it lightly. You know, that's why saving the wood and repurposing that stuff was, was really paramount to what we were doing. And so how's it been? I mean, you know, you, you starting in January of 2021, tough time to start a, I mean, I think you said it before, right? Your planning and zoning is like the same as a, a gathering place. Yeah. 2021, not a great year to start a gathering business. No, it, it was hard. Honestly, it was hard. Um, we, we had finished everything up and our liquor and our liquor licenses, licenses came back. So we were ready to go. And so we said, let's do it. And, and looking back, I'm glad we did it, but it was tough. Like we had plastic cups. Nobody wants to drink beer out of a plastic cup, you know, and we had those till May. We ordered the glasses, they, but I told the guy at the warehouse, just leave them. I, I don't want you to even ship them because there's nothing you can do. The story I tell everybody is in May when they did come, the trailer truck came with all these pallets of glasses. I almost cried in the street because <sighs> I'm like, oh, my God, we're real. <sighs> you know, we, we have glasses now. We can we can pour somebody something cold that'll stay cold right. as opposed to warming up because of the plastic. So it, it was tough, but it's been building. And like I said, the community has been, been incredible. You know, we do host a lot of events uh, for people. And, and so it, it really just provides that space for people to get back together. And I think coming out of COVID, hopefully we're coming out of COVID, that um, people need that connection again. They need to get out and, and feel relatively safe. And we learned a lot. As bad as COVID is and was, you know, we learned that people don't want to be mashed together, right? The days of, of standing 10 people deep in a bar is, is not what anybody really wants, no, no matter how good the beer is, right. right? So we have two bars. We have two fours and we have a bar on each four so people can spread out better. Um, keeping people separate, they put it, they installed this, these two massive uh, heating HVAC systems. Right, so each floor has its own system. We move tons of, they're like the size of small cars and they move tons of air just to keep everything moving along. Hand sanitizers are never gonna go away. Yeah. And so we have hand sanitizers everywhere. And so there was a lot of learning, I think, you know, and understanding that people, people wanna go out, but they wanna feel safe. And, and so we've got a, we have a responsibility to provide that to them, you know, as best we can. And so the and so business has been growing over it's the last year. It's been growing, yeah, absolutely. And yeah. and so we've got no complaints. You know, it, it's. Um, I, I keep telling my son, I want to buy a Corvette, you know, and but I haven't bought it yet. But I'm working on it, you know. So, so, he, so I'm patient. So I'll wait. And, and we'll get there. But it has been building, you know, it's been fun. So let's talk a little bit about your background and what hap what you've done sort of before, you know, getting into a brewing. Because I've talked to a few brewers and I've learned it's a very like tech. It's actually, you know, people think of beer in a good time. And you mentioned, the, you know, six people deep in a bar and maybe they remember their college days or whatever. Um, but I've learned that brewing beer is a really technical aspect. And it seems like people from a technical background have gravitated to it. And you're no, no different. So maybe share with the audience you know, what you've done before. You mentioned Hamilton Sunstream. Maybe just sort of give us your background. Sure. So I, uh, I do control systems. I'm a systems engineer. I, I run an engineering company in, out of East Hartford now. And I've done, you know, connecting systems, avionics and aerospace systems, um, and, and really figuring out how to make things work and how to do stuff. So in the brewing world, that, that does help. You know, I, I'm able to do kind of figure out heat transfer stuff still and, and, and figure out, you know, moving stuff and, and how to do that stuff. But brewing is, is where, where my son and I, I think, make a great team is that my, it's a lot of organic chemistry. And so my son really excelled at chemistry. He loved chemistry in school where I maybe not, so, or it's been so long that I probably don't remember, you know. And so he, uh, he really embraces that part of it. And then, you know, it's a family affair. So then my daughter gets involved with flavors and, and kind of ideas of it. So it all kind of works together. But, but the engineering side is like laying stuff out. And then it gets into, you know, kind of manufacturing, process flow. You know, how do I want, what stations do I want? Um, where do I, how far do I want to move this beer from each one of its different intermediate stages to the next, to the next level and to the next uh, vessel that it needs to sit in and do some activities? 
So do you find yourself doing sort of a lot of the analytics on that to sort of like, because to me, the more you're going to do smaller batches with the more different flavors, the more sort of like on point with technical you sort of need to be, because if you're going to be moving so many more things around, you need more planning. Exactly. And and I do have a simulation. I have a production simulation. Do you really? I do. I have to tell you that. Honestly, I do have that. It's a spreadsheet, so my son can work it. But but you, you put in what you want and, and, and you put in what your plan is and it starts showing you where things have to go and when they have to go at different points and, and when it should be able to get out. Now, there's some variation to that, mm -hmm. right? It, because it is an organic chemi uh, chemical reaction. But it, it is funny that I do I do, do that. Yeah, I, it's a <laughs> massive spreadsheet that does all these calculations and shows throughputs and, <laughs> and, and access points and, and where things have to get moved around. And brewing is, as much of brewing is brewing the beer itself, a uh, large portion's cleaning, right? You got to clean all these vessels. You got to clean everything. You got to make sure everything's sanitized and sterilized. And so that has to factor, and it factors into that simulation as well as when does this, this different chain, uh, vessels have to get cleaned and sanitized and sterilized and ready to go for the next one. It's a lot to keep track of the whole, right. the whole time, and, right? And that's why I convinced them the simulations is great. You know, <laughs> it kind of shows you intermediate stuff as you're going through. So you said it was a family affair. Kind of walk us through that. It sounds like your wife's the real estate department. Um, but, but talk us through sort of like how you guys operate. So, um, yeah, so... It is a family affair between my wife, my daughter, my son, and myself. And my son does does all the brewing and does a lot of um, the uh, equipment maintenance, I guess is the right thing, with support. And then I kind of handle the friend of it um, with the support from a lot of great great coworkers that, that really kind of serve people and do that stuff. I, I tease people that I'm really Julie at the love boat. You know, <laughs> I'm really asking people how you doing and, and how things are, but, and just making sure things go smoothly up front. And then my wife handles events. It turns out that events are, are pretty big mm -hmm. for us. And so it becomes a kind of a full-time job for her to handle, uh, events and even like activity planning, like live music, trivia stuff, and, and when all that occurs. Because that's, again, another moving piece that all kind of has to mesh together. And then my daughter really handles a lot of the, the media stuff and, and the production stuff, as well as throwing out crazy beer ideas that my son then cries <laughs> to me about. He has no idea how he's going to make this thing, you know, and and so it becomes interesting. That's really it, interesting. So who's doing the, so you've got, you've got really, really interesting component going on here and you've you said events a few times. I'm just curious, what kind of events do people? So people, it, it, it's crazy. You know, people have certainly uh, stag parties and, and Jack and Jill parties there. And, and we kind of expected that. Um, retirement parties have, have peaked up, birthday parties, um, the, the interesting thing that I found was, and, and I, I don't mean to be sexist by any means, but bridal showers are huge for us. Really? It, it, was, it was shocking, but, but yeah, they, and baby showers. And, and I kept Stop. thinking. And I kept really? thinking, yeah, and I kept thinking, when my kids were born, I'm not sure my wife would let me have a, <laughs> a baby shower at the brewery. I'd be there with a the question, you know? But, but yeah, so those tend to be pretty big. And then there's, um, you know, public events and, and, you know, like we do a lot of stuff with, with animal rescues. With a name like Bad Dog, we have to really support that. You know, we don't mean that there are bad dogs. It's, it's really kind of a play on words. But we want to support animal rescue people. We want to support um, just the community at large for a lot of different events. So you, you got to something I wanted to ask you, and now seems like a good time, the name. So What's the background? So, so Bad Dog was... Anybody who's had a dog has had bad dog. They're yeah. not really bad dogs. And just like there's not really bad beer, there's beer you may not like, but that's okay. It's not necessarily bad beer. It's just beer that you're not fond of. Right. And so, you know, that was the same kind of thing. There's no, there's no bad dogs and there's no bad beer. And so and that it, was the name of the, yeah. there we go, the name of the brewery. And we have, uh, in fact, they're home now. I have three bad dogs that are probably chewing on furniture <laughs> or each other right now and destroying something at the house. So have you been a dog lover? Yeah. Yeah. All my life. I mean, cats are great too, but, but dogs are, are not to offend any cat, cat people, but, but dogs have a personality that that's just, um, and they're, and they're always happy to see you. Cats. Yeah. Listen, at the risk of uh, alienating some of the audience, I'm a dog guy, uh, yeah. you know, through and through, there's just no competition. And, and dogs and brewery go great together. We'll, yeah. Because we don't produce, we don't have 
uh, food in, in-house, right? So we have food trucks or people have food delivered in. Um, we can have dogs in the brewery. So so dogs come in, and, and it's just a natural kind of fit for that kind I of mean, crowd. I mean, so I, it was interesting because you said firehouse, and for some reason when I think of a firehouse, Fire trucks, firemen, and a dog. Those yep. are the things that kind yep. of connected it, connected it all. So it was interesting that it just sort of had nothing to do with the naming, but uh, obviously your love of dogs and then having a dog at a firehouse makes all the sense in the all the sense in the world. Yeah, a- absolutely, and it's it's fun. You know, it's just a fun thing to do. So you're you're from Connecticut, right? University yes. uh, University of Hartford guy. Um, so h- how did you? How do you? Well, what do you do for work now when you're not at the brewery? So I, I do run an engineering firm. Um, so we do a lot of, like I said, we do a lot of systems and software activity for uh, avionics and aerospace activities, engine controls, that kind of stuff for a lot of the manufacturers that people are aware of, as well as some new smaller startups. So what, when you say like engine controls, I know we're going off the brewery path a little bit here, but uh, I'm sure a lot of people listening are connected to the aerospace industry. But so when you say uh, aerospace controls and, and avionics, like what does that mean? So so the engine itself, like the jet uh, jet engine, a gas generator, really has uh, a control system that makes it operate so that the pilot moves effectively the gas pedal for what he wants the engine to do. And then the system's got to react to that and be able to accommodate different um you know, different power points as well as different environmental conditions, right? It's flying through the sky, so different temperature ranges, different pressure ranges. And so it has to adjust itself to keep make, making that same power that somebody wanted. So just like your car, you know, um, there's a control system for your car that when you step on the accelerator, you assume to move forward. And yeah, we, you certainly hope so, right? right. Yeah. And, and so it's the same kind of process. It's just on a a big rotating piece of machinery as opposed to, you know, an engine inside a car. An engine inside of a car. And you've been, and so this is something you've been doing for a long time. Yeah, about 37 years. Yeah, that's a minute. You yeah. enjoy it? I, I, do, I enjoy the technical side of it. I, I love solving problems. Um, and, and that's where the, like at the brewery, I love solving those problems at the brewery when we come up with how we got to do something or... I uh, I don't like financial sides of things. Yeah, you, know? you mentioned that a couple of times. So I mean, the brewery's got to stay open. I hope somebody's keeping an eye on the. My finance. wife, is, my wife is uh, she's a, a grant administrator, and so she has an accounting. She's got a degree in accounting. She does that, so she does all the the financial stuff and yells at me when we're spending too much money. <laughs> so yeah, well, it's, it's important, right? I mean, you got to want to keep it open. You gotta you gotta have it uh, going on. And what's the brewery's hours? And like, how often are you guys open? So right now we're we're open four days a week: Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We open Thursdays at four, and then Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at noon. And we stay open typically to about nine thirty or so, uh, depending on what's going on. Certainly, it can go later. We do have a permit that does allow us to to stay open later. And then Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays, we typically do, um, you know, if somebody wants a private event. So again, there's bigger spaces. Yesterday, we had a, a, a one of the town committees was having a, 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 a nomination convention. Um, so they came into the brewery and were able to do that there. Oh, so because so, yesterday was Tuesday, right? Tuesday, yeah. my mind. Um, and so you just opened it up on a Tuesday to like yep. let them use it. So if by a, by appointment, people can do other exactly. stuff. Exactly, exactly. And so does your is anyone uh, in the family working full time on the on the business? My son is. So my he, son is. Yeah, he's, he's doing the heavy time. lift. Yeah, he he really manages all that stuff. Wow. Well, tell me a little bit about what it's like kind of doing this project with your family. So it's interesting, you know. Um, I have to be. My son's great. Uh, my son and I have done a lot of the, the the stuff, you know, the initial groundwork, and uh, we fight without question. Is that right? Oh yeah, we throw things at each other. You know, it. it when people aren't around, it, it's kind of a di- different atmosphere, yelling at each other, that kind of thing. But but it really is. It it's been great to really do that. I, I think it's a unique privilege that I can work with my son and really watch him kind of take ownership and really move forward with things. You know, I, I, have, I apply some of the statistical process control and, and okay, I can go talk to people. And take and some of that plain engine control knowledge and bring it to brewing. Exactly. And, and he, uh, and, and he's, he's 25 now. So he, he's still really young, at least in my, my eyes, he's young, but he's learning a lot and he's starting to get out of his shell. You know, he's, he's of that that uh, age group where cell phones were popular, right? And texting was popular. So interacting with people is tough for him. And, and, and I get that. I'm really not a, a people person myself, but he, uh, 
I'm watching him come out of his shell and, and having something to talk about. The brewery's a great crutch. You know, I, I was so happy we went into the firehouse because it opened up a way for me to talk to somebody. You know, I, I typically can't just go up to somebody and start talking to them. Either you got to start talking to me or, um, or I need something that kind of breaks the conversation. Mm, tell and, me, the, yeah. and the firehouse does that for us. It's a great crutch that it kind of helps, helps me and helps him as well to get out of his shell and kind of interact with people more. Yeah, because you got something immediately to talk about, right? You a you're there, so you got something in common yeah. and something of super interest that I'm sure people love to, exactly. to hear about. And then, where does your wife and daughter kind of enter the mix, right? Because it seems like we've got a four headed family yeah, affair. So, here. so my daughter really does um, all the social media stuff. I'm I'm not very savvy with Facebook or, or Instagram or or whatever. Um, so she she really helps us get through that and understand. There's a lot of uh, statistics available so you can kind of start targeting and, and marketing to specific people. So she really works on that aspect of it. And, and my wife is, is kind of the, uh, my daughter also does like new flavor developments. Like I told you, she kind of yells at me, yells at my son about, he's got to try to make some, you know, macadamia nut stout no thing. Way. And, and my son looks at me like, how do I do that with, what do I get for macadamia <laughs> nuts, right? I'm going to, I have to crush them. What am I supposed to do with these things? You know, so... So that becomes kind of a, a, an interesting mix. My wife, on the other hand, is the one who keeps us honest. Right. You know, she was the one who, who really recognized the, the building's potential. And she, she kind of, as not a beer drinker, because sometimes we'll make beer just for the sake of making beer. And, and she's the one who pushed us to look at other things, to be able to provide a, a, a full package for people as opposed to, you know, here's a, here's a beer, thanks for coming kind of deal, to really provide entertainment, provide a space. We fight about little things like she wants to have flowers, right, in the windowsills. And we're like, we're a brewery. And she's like, I don't care. <laughs> that, that, that makes it nice. And, and when you look at our demographics, about 65% women is, is our demographic, and, and which was another interesting fact for me. But that tends to appeal more to them than, than say, a, a guy. I don't really care if right. there's a flower in the window or not. That's right. You know? So... Um, that kind of stuff really helps out. So she really keeps us honest as we're going. You've through. gotten, I mean, I, I mean, I'm sure people that are listening that have run businesses or are running businesses have just heard you sort of articulate, you know, a little bit of a, of a dream team type of a scenario, right? Uh, a different aspects of, of what everyone brings to the table. And you need someone who's sort of the practical behind the scenes. You need someone who's out there doing marketing and willing to get their hands dirty, especially in some of the newer technology aspects. You need somebody who understands the process flow, who can maximize how the production line works. And you need someone who's going to help get the actual work done and, and sort of drive the day to day. And you seem to have, you know, all of that going on in, in one family. It's unbelievable. Yeah, it, it, it is. We do play off our, our strengths pretty well. We still fight with our yeah, Well, listen, you know, the, the joke is, and I probably should, I'm going to say it anyway. My wife is a paper person. She likes paper. It's from the accounting days, you know, receipts sure. and everything else. So for the event book, it's it's a book. It's physically a book. And we're like, we need this electronically. Yeah, your daughter must right? be going crazy. Yeah. yeah. You know, it can't be a book. We need we need it somewhere so we all can see it at the same time. And and she has a book. That's right? it. And so we have to kind of work work through some of those things. But it's fun. And and, it, and we do get on each other's nerves and we do fight a lot. But but in the end, we're all working for the same goal. So Listen, I, I, I don't know if you ever read, uh, Patrick, Patrick Lencioni wrote a book about the five dysfunctions of a team and talks about like what teams need to have to be successful and to be high functioning. And honestly, trust, conflict, commitment, focus on results, accountability, all those things are so important. And, and so conflict isn't bad. And it just sounds like you guys have this amazing sort of team uh, working together, doing driving to some amazing results. Yeah. I mean, it even comes through in, in the beer flavors. Um, I'm not an IPA guy. So so I tend to want to make sure we have non-IPAs. You know, so what do like, you have? Yeah, go for it. So we have, well, we've got like Hefeweizens, we have Blondales, uh, wheat beers, flavored wheat beers. My son's an IPA guy. He loves IPAs. We have New England IPAs, double dry hop New England IPAs, <laughs> you know, uh, West Coast IPAs, Southwest IPAs. And my daughter loves stouts. 
and so we have to we have stouts, you know, to to kind of even out. So there's a whole kind of, and and it's great because it kind of, and then my wife makes us have the other stuff, <laughs> you know, which is great too because there's a lot of people that that when we went, one of the things like I told you earlier is going starting a brewery. We went to go and check out a lot of breweries, and and we went all over the country doing it. And and there's great breweries out there. It's it's amazing the industry, and some of them we felt kind of bad for my wife because she doesn't like beer. So she would sit there with like a bottle of water where we're trying different beers and, and having comments on it, and she couldn't really participate. And so we wanted to make sure we address that, you know, with, with people. And, and again, it's about everybody having a good time, not just a couple people in there. And so it, it works. Matt, it's just such a, a terrific story. I can't wait to um, get out to the brewery and, and check it out. And I think you've really touched on a lot of great themes that I hope the audience is going to really take a lot from, from the, the great kind of intermittent teamwork that you guys have and how you function together to recovering uh, the old building, to following your passion. You've talked about calling the town to get help, not being afraid to ask questions, traveled the country to see other examples, to know how to build. I mean, it's just a, it's an unbelievably great plethora of uh, business lessons. I really appreciate you sharing them with us. Oh, thank you. Well, listen, I'm going to go to rapid fire round of questions to uh, sure. round us out. Are you ready? Okay. All right. Red Sox or Yankees? Neither. Neither. No baseball? I I'm not a big fan of baseball since the big baseball strike. Okay. So I used to watch the California Angels. So. No kidding. Yeah. Look at that. That's a stadium I have been to on my list. <laughs> Checked it off my bucket list. Starbucks or Duncan? Duncan. Staycation or exotic destination? Wow. Um, I like exotic destinations. iPhone or Android? iPhone. Prefer a sports car or an SUV? Sports car. Do you got a favorite business book? Um, Who Moved My Cheese? Well, that's a great one. Uh, if you had to do something other than be the brewer at Bad Dog Brewing Company and the president of uh, CSO USA or CSUSA, what else would you do? What would you do if you could do anything? I'd like to be a photographer. Really? I'm, I'm not artistic, though. That's my, my drawback. I'm, I'm in, I, even when we do like web pages in the engineering world, you know, I do like tool, I was doing tool development for a while. I used to call them industrial tools, right? They're not pretty looking. Mm -hmm. So I'm always amazed by people that are able to do that. And, and I'd love to be able to do that kind of stuff. Oh, that's a really cool story. Uh, what's something that you learned early in your life or early in your career that you think helped propel you to all the success that you've had? Don't be afraid to ask questions. That's a good one. What's something that you learned later in your life or later in your career, Matt, that if you went back to tell young Matt and he'd listen to you, you think it'd make a positive impact on his life? Um, change is good. I, I, I'm really against change from an early, early, early time. You know, I'm not a fan of it. I don't like it, even when I'm in control of it. But change is good. And, a, and being able to adapt to situations is, is a great, a great, skill to have. And I wish I applied that a lot more early on. Matt, man, this was a really terrific conversation. I super appreciate your time. Thanks so much. Well, thank you. Thank you for having us. Made in America with Ari Santiago is brought to you by Compass MSP. Thanks for listening and spending some time with me today. My goal is to help build a strong manufacturing community, and it would be impossible to do without all of you.